exciting event in Shenandoah. As Mary said, my name is Todd Becker. I'm CEO of Green Plains Renewable Energy. As some of you, some of, some of you may know, we are the fourth largest ethanol producer in the world with 740 million gallons of production. This represents over a billion dollars of investment coming from individuals and institutions over the last several years. We are listed on the NASDAQ stock market, and our company has grown in the last four years to over $3 billion in revenue expected in 2011. And if you think back a couple years ago, corporate headquarters was right downtown in the Bank of Shenandoah. So I think this is a great story coming out of Shenandoah, Iowa. We directly employ 600 hardworking Americans across our plants in nine plants in six states. And what a lot of people fail to realize is those 600 jobs have created 5,000 additional jobs that are dependent on this industry from being successful. The ethanol industry has invested over $25 billion over the last several years when the federal government started through their initiative to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. This investment, contrary to popular belief, has come solely from the private sector. Alongside of this, the Renewable Fuel Standard Program was established to help create and incent market acceptance demand for what today is almost 10% of the nation's fuel supply, which is an incredible feat looking around the world today. There's no other renewable energy industry in the world that has moved to commercial scale and has given the consumer a choice at every corner of the country. In fact, ethanol today is the cheapest motor fuel in the world. But as an industry and as a company, we knew that we could do a lot more. This is proven here today with the opening of these bioreactors. What this represents is a true intersection between first-generation technologies and advanced technologies. This can only happen successfully by like-minded parties that understand the importance of co-locating a plant like this on this property in Shenandoah. What we are accomplishing today is showing the world that only, not, not only does carbon have value, but that carbon and other byproducts from this ethanol plant, like warm water and heat, can create a product that will give Americans food, feed, and fuel. When we embarked on this project three years ago, we thought by the time that we reach commercial scale like we are today, there'll be plenty of demand for algae biomass to produce these products. All we wanted to do was become the farmer of this product or grow and harvest the algae. What we discovered is that we have moved faster than the downstream markets have, have developed. So now with these reactors, we can grow and harvest algae at commercial scale, but what are we going to do with it? While we wanted to focus solely on growing and harvesting piece of the value chain, we realized that we had to go even further than that. With the algae we are producing today here in Shenandoah, bioprocess algae is developing end juice markets themselves. In the feed market, bioprocess algae is starting feed trials with Iowa State University next month. This will show us the value of a high protein product in animal feed for the future growth of that industry. In the food market, algae will be used for antioxidants, pigments, omega-3s, and protein, as we mentioned. We are starting to develop products in all of these sectors from algae grown in these reactors in Shenandoah. And finally, in the energy market. Algae gives us one of the greatest opportunities to break our dependence on foreign oil. Not only can the lipids and oil extracted from this algae be used for biodiesel, our algae is being tested as we speak on the viability to go directly into a refinery to make a bio-crude product. Finally, Many, may, many of you may not know this, but you can grow algae for starch and carbohydrates as well. Anyone that knows what happens in the plant behind you knows that starch and carbohydrates make ethanol. We are now testing and we've seen very good results on making ethanol using our algae produced here in Shenandoah. It's still very early days for this technology, but it's successful our vision to create a process that captures carbon dioxide from every ethanol plant in the United States uses that input to grow and harvest algae, reduce the production plant's carbon footprint from neutral to negative, and takes the output from the reactors, the algae, and produces next generation fuels, ethanol, and energy. This is all while we are creating high value animal feed and high value food products. Now that's something that's very exciting and it's happening here in Shenandoah. American ethanol is the only alternative to foreign oil today. This is at the heart of a national security issue. As oil reaches $110 a barrel, we are steadily sending money from our economy right into the hands of rogue states and terrorist shielding countries that oppose America's interests. As oil reaches $110 a barrel, we are paying other nations for the right to pollute our air and send our jobs overseas. 
The ethanol industry produces over 1 million barrels per day of equivalent oil. To put that in perspective for you, the conflict in Libya has taken 1.2 billion barrels off the world market. You have seen the impact of that in our pocketbook and our economy. The fuel made here today in the plant behind you needs to be embraced by the American people and the world. Every gallon of ethanol for which we create demand in the United States reduces carbon emissions by 59% compared to gasoline, creates American jobs, and strengthens our national security by reducing our dependence on foreign oil. Who would want an unlimited supply of cleaner transportation fuel that we make at home? We are putting thousands of Americans at work instead of shipping $300 billion annually overseas. As you can see, the city of Shenandoah, the great state of Iowa, the state of Rhode Island, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are making an impact on our energy independence.